Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with another entry in my ongoing vlog series, mostly surrounding my attempted escape from New Yorkistan. And it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but today something happened that kind of created a need for an update. And it was also recommended by a, uh, by a friend of mine, Paul Gordon, to uh, vent my feelings on this and I figured well there's no place as good as any to vent as in front of a microphone which as I've mentioned numerous times uh, in recent podcasts and vlogs and stuff like that that this is actually where I feel most comfortable so here we go so if you've been following along with the story here I've been trying to escape from New York Yorkistan for quite a while I have my ongoing court case, which is still not settled as of today, which is, geez, I've lost track of the day already. Oh, we're on the 17th. Today's the 17th, April 17th. As of today, I'm still awaiting my next court appearance, will, which will occur a little less than a week from today, uh, next Monday, which is the continuation of the pretrial hearings. Uh, I spoke about that in my last court update video. So I'm still dealing with that. And then there's also the attempted sale of my house, which I'm still dealing with. And I have cataloged or chronicled, whichever word you prefer, I guess, in vlogs and blogs and in other avenues. Just the whole process of, of just trying to sell what's supposed to be my own property and the amazing amount of hoops I've had to jump through and just the ridiculousness that I get caught up in it in everything because no matter how many hoops I jump through, people on the other side just go, eh, yeah, we'll get to our stuff when we get to it. So following on that theme, I made a phone call this morning to the contracting company who's supposed to be handling the permits for the house that I had never obtained and thought had been obtained through my mother, who claimed she was going to take care of this when it became a problem a while ago. And uh, I found out as I was trying to sell the house that, oops, she never did that. So now I have to scramble to do that. So this was one of those things I've talked about before. It was kind of got thrown in my path. Okay, now I have to take care of this. I have to spend even more money just to be able to sell my house. But fine, I tried to figure out a way to do it. I tried to get the contractor who originally did the work to come in and, and help me out with obtaining the permits for this. He just passed the buck to somebody else and said, oh, I have a friend who also does these things. He can take care of it for you. So I had this friend of his come over and he looked at everything and I explained the situation, including the urgency of the situation. The fact that I needed this taken care of almost immediately because it was going to eventually end up holding up the sale of my house. And this gentleman, you know, re reassured me, no, no problem. You know, the town can be a pain in the butt to deal with sometimes, but I'll take care of everything and we'll get this sewn up for you. No issues. So I said, great. You know, send me, uh, after we met, I said, send me a proposal. I'll look it over. And as long as everything's good, I'll sign off on it and we'll get, get ready to go. So, all right, great. So that happened. He, you know, the couple days later, he sent me a proposal. Unfortunately, he misspelled my name. So I emailed him back because that's what he emailed me. So I emailed him back and said, hey, listen, uh, I, everything looks good. I, I, I'm just about ready to sign off on this. I just need to wait for a couple of days to make sure I have the money to give you your deposit. But you just you misspelled my name. So if you could just correct that and send me a corrected version, uh, you know, within by the time you get that back to me and I should have the money situation figured out, we should be ready to roll in a couple of days on this. Never heard from the guy. Tried emailing him multiple more times, you know, two or three more times. Still never heard from him. Finally, I called his office. I was told that not everybody in the office has access to the email, which is why nobody else responded to me. So I said, well, who does have access to the email? Well, this, this gentleman, Jet Dennis, the one who I had spoken to, the one who had been in my house. Well, okay, if he's the one who has access to the email, why isn't he answering them? They didn't have an answer for that. So finally, by talking to somebody else in their office, I was able to get the corrected version of the, uh, of the proposal sent to me. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to save us some time. I'm just going to drive over there and sign it in front of you and hand you the cash so we can get rolling. Oh, this is great, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll be ready for you. Okay. So I show up there that day with the money in hand. And just so happens, Dennis happens to be in the building. Now, this is the man who's been avoiding my emails and hasn't returned my calls, but he's there. 
And, you know, just kind of, it was almost coincidental that I met, like, it, it seemed like he was kind of, oops, I, you shouldn't see me here type of thing because he had been ducking me. But whatever, he came highly recommended and everybody else in the office seemed really nice and they kept reassuring me, don't worry, sir, we will take care of this as soon as possible. Okay, great. So gave him the money, signed the, propo- signed the, uh, the proposal and said, let's get to work. And then I went to deal with the rest of the things in my life that are constantly going on. So I kind of put it off to the, you know, in in the back of my mind, because I figured this is being taken care of. This is one less thing I have to worry about. This guy was, you know, I was paying him to take care of everything, doing all the legwork, uh, filling out the applications, going back and forth to the town to, to deal with all this stuff. Like he was supposed to deal with everything. So I said, great. So, you know, a week or so go by and I'm dealing with all the other BS I'm dealing with. And I decide to give his office a call just to check in and say, hey, you know, just trying to follow up, see how far, you know, how things are going, want to make sure this is still, you know, get, getting taken care of and uh, I can cross this off my list completely. Well, of course, Dennis isn't there that day and they take a message. Oh, he'll call you back, sir. Don't worry. He's not here right now, but I'll leave a message and he'll call you back. Okay. A couple more days go by because life got in the way. I kind of got held up with other stuff and then I realized, hey, I still haven't heard back from him. So I try calling again, get a different person. Oh, he's not here right now, but we'll take a message. And I said, you know, no disrespect, but I was told that the last time and he never called me back. So uh, is there anything else we could do here to make sure he actually calls me? Oh, don't worry, sir. We apologize for that, but he'll he'll definitely call you back. I'm, I'm writing down your message and I'll make sure he gets it today. Okay. That day goes by. Another day goes by. A day after that goes by. Now I'm starting to freak out. I'm like, what's going on here? So I call back a third time. Of course, Dennis again is not in. And uh, this time I'm pretty mad. And I say, listen, I'm, it's been a few weeks now. I haven't heard anything. The guy's not even returning my calls. As far as I'm concerned, you folks took you know, $600 of my money and that's what you did. You took my money. I have a contract with you, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a fraud because you haven't done anything. What's the deal here? Oh, so we're so sorry, sir. Don't, don't worry. I will make sure that he gets back to you. You know, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell him it's urgent. He has to call you immediately. Okay. No call that day either. So this is all taking over the, you know, taking place over the course of a few weeks. So finally I call him back. You know, I call him back this morning again and I get somebody else again. And immediately I'm pissed off and say, listen, I'm, I'm fed up with it. This is ridiculous. Like he is actively ducking my calls because I keep leaving messages with you folks. You keep telling me he's going to call me back and he never does. Well, it just so happens I called early enough today that Dennis happened to be there. Oh, sir, I'm, we're so sorry. I'll, I'll put you on with him right away. So Dennis gets on the phone, all nonchalant. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm like, what do you mean, how am I doing? I've been trying to call you for weeks. You haven't returned my calls. Oh, yeah. Not even a sorry, not an apology. Just, oh, yeah. Well, this is, you know, we're, we're doing this. I'm like, where, you know, I ask him point blank, what's the deal with my project here? I gave you money. It's been over three weeks. I haven't heard word one from you. And then he says to me, well, you know, we've been dealing with some other stuff. And, uh, you know, we didn't really get to yours until the past couple of days. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The day you came to my house, which was well over a month ago at this point, you were informed of the urgency of this situation. You specifically told me that I could trust in you because you would make sure this got handled as fast as humanly possible to ensure that it did not hold up the sale of my house. And now here we are over a month plus later and you finally got to my stuff? Like, that doesn't jive with me. You know, I understand I have run a business, but, you know, certain things take priority. But when you tell somebody you're going to do something for them and then you won't even return their calls for weeks, and again... He's not apologetic. He's just, well, yeah. Well, we can start the expedit, you know, we can start the start expediting the process today. Wait a minute. Why haven't you expedited it yet? You were told to begin. At this point, I've completely lost it because like I had again, if you've been following this whole journey of mine, I just keep getting shafted at every turn. And as I was reminded of this morning by my buddy Paul, the one who kind of inadvertently convinced me to do this video. I, I should try taking more of a stoic approach, which I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of stoicism and I, I try to follow that path when I can, <laughs> but 
but unfortunately, it's difficult. And, you know, the, the whole the whole idea with stoicism is you're never supposed, nobody can follow it perfectly. Uh, that's, that's supposed to be understood. But sometimes I have a hard time getting even close to it because, yeah, I, I understand the concept of only trying to focus on the things you can control because things that are out of your control, you kind of waste your time worrying and fretting about them because you can't do anything about them. And I get that. But unfortunately for me, I'm in this situation where running low on money, can't get work around here because of situations that have happened in the past. I've been waiting to get out of this state so I can go somewhere else and start my life over again with my family. And I keep being held up and it's, it's never my fault. It's always somebody else's doing, whether it's the town, whether it's the buyer, whether it's the buyer's bank. It's all of these things that just keep happening. And unfortunately, while it's easy enough on one hand to say, okay, well, they're out of my control. I, I should try not to focus on them. On the other hand, it's really hard not to when every day that goes by brings you, brings you closer to poverty brings you closer to actual homelessness because unfortunately if the sale of my house falls through and it doesn't actually happen yeah I'll still have a place to live for a little while but then my house is going to end up in foreclosure at some point because I haven't been paying the mortgage because the whole the whole plan was sell the house be done with this pay off everything I owe have my money move on with my new life so, you know, I was instructed by my real estate attorney to stop to stop worrying about paying the mortgage because don't worry, the house is going to be sold soon enough. So if this doesn't go through, if the sale of the house doesn't go through, then I'm completely screwed. So, yeah, it's, it's a little hard for me to remain calm. It's a little hard for me to remain stoic and say, oh, well, you know, this is other people's screw ups. What are you going to do about it? Just focus on your own. It's like, well, no, these other people's screw ups are directly affecting my life. And it's just, it's become so infuriating. Like this morning, I completely lost it. I snapped. You know, I was one step away from, as my buddy Merrick would put it, you know, taking that box lunch up to the top of the clock tower. You know, I was, I was out in my car. I was ready to go hurt some people because I was just so frustrated. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I scared the crap out of my wife and kids. Um, and I still have to talk to them about that. Uh, you know, everything, they're all, they're better now. They know daddy's calmer, but you know, I just, the stress of it just got to me. And, uh, it's partially why I'm doing this, this video today. You know, like I said, I was kind of encouraged to vent my frustrations and yeah, doing stuff like this is, is a form of therapy for me, but I'm also hopeful that, you know, maybe somebody else will connect with this stuff and, uh, it'll help them out in some way, shape or form because, just talking about it with a couple of my friends who share similar ideas with me and, and, and similar mindsets on certain things. You know, I was able to see that, that just talking it through with them, you know, helped me. And they also came to re some realizations on their own just by talking my problems out with me. So, you know, hopefully other people can learn from this somehow, but man, it's, it's just frustrating. You know, like I said, I, I really was, I, 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 I probably should have recorded this a little bit earlier because while I was talking to my buddy Paul about this, about making this video and how I needed to vent and get this stuff off, I was, I wanted it to be as raw as possible because, you know, my emotions were flowing and I thought maybe that, maybe that would be the cathartic of, in some sorts of getting that out too. And, you know, maybe even breaking down crying on camera, who the hell knows? At this point, I, I think I might be a little past that. Um, I'm definitely a little calmer. I've dealt with some things and tried to get myself involved in a couple other, th a couple other projects in the past couple hours just to take my mind off of it. And I've refocused a little bit, but you know, I'm still, I'm not angry anymore, but I am definitely physically and mentally drained. This, this whole process has taken an incredible toll on me. And it hasn't been until very recently how, that I've realized how much of a toll it's taken on me. And I'm sure it's taken even more of a toll on the people around me. And I do apologize to everybody around me who has been trying to help me out through this and, and is patient with me because, well, I know I'm not the easiest person to deal with all the time. And this isn't making it any easier, but I'm just at my wits end, you know. And while talking it through with people has helped and I'm actually scheduled to do a a podcast tonight with with Paul 
and uh, another friend of ours, um, ironically about the topic of stoicism in part. So I think that may help me too, getting to talk through some of these things. But even with that, it's just, you know, I'm somebody who, despite my uh, my love of stoicism and my strict adherence to logic, I am a very emotional person. I always have been. And, you know, the easiest emotion for me is usually anger. And, you know, I've joked about it before, but I, I'm not... I'm not completely kidding when I say that the Billy Joel's The Angry Young Man has been my theme song since I was a child. It wasn't me who gave it to, gave me that theme song. Somebody, other other people in my life did because I just always seem so angry to them. And uh, you know, it's the easy it's the easiest emotion for me to to connect with. So it's probably why I find it the quickest. But I've tried. I, I've really tried to remain rational throughout this entire process. And I've tried to implement, you know, parts of the Stoic philosophy and, and tried to, you know, only focus on what I can focus on. But it's been too much for me. You know, I'm, I'm not prepared yet, I, I suppose. Well, actually, I don't even suppose I know. I'm not, I'm not mentally there yet. I would like to be. I'd like for the stuff to be able to just roll off my back. But, you know, I still have a lot of work to do. Um, you know, got to dig deeper. Got to do some more self-actualization, self-realization, self, 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 all that self stuff. It's what I need to do. And, you know, like I said, hopefully talking it through, whether, whether, uh, I'm sure some people listen, whether they do or not, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm partially doing this for my own therapy, but hopefully other people will, you know, will, will get something out of this and say, oh yeah, I've, I've been in that place before. Cause I've gotten that a couple times already today. You know, some of my, some of my friends were like, oh, I, I totally understand, man. I'm, I'm right there with you. I know that level of frustration. Other ones were like, suck it up and, you know, get back to work basically. Um, and I needed to hear both, but it's just, uh, it's just tough. I mean, I know I keep saying that, but man, this whole thing, you know, I've, I've tried really hard to take responsibility for my actions you know the the whole beginning of this as far as like the legal situation goes yeah i did some things i said some things i wrote some things that pissed some people off and that's what sparked this whole thing so yeah i take responsibility for what i said and wrote and still stand behind it um but a lot of the other crap that has come since then been completely out of my control and it's just been overwhelming and you know whether it's the court case that is now spread out for almost exactly a year at this point like i said we're on april 17th so in another 13 or 14 days will it be exactly a year from the point this started or just trying to sell my house which i've been trying to do half-heartedly since october and you know full bore since january when i actually got an agent and you know a real estate agent and tried to go that route and it's just one thing after another. And I just keep coming back to the question of how much is one individual supposed to take? You know, how many times are, is one individual to supposed to be told, okay, you need to do this. And if you just do this, you will get what you're after. And then you do that thing. And it's like, oh, no, wait a minute. You just, there's just one more thing. Oh, no, no, just one more, just one more. Like, how many times is, is an individual supposed to hear, it's just one more thing you have to do before they reach that breaking point, and they just can't do it anymore? I don't know. I almost reached mine this morning. I thought I had. You know, Thankfully, I was able to be talked off the ledge by uh, some people who, who do give a shit about me. And thank you, guys. You know who you are. Um, even the ones I may have yelled at at the beginning. <laughs> You, uh, you definitely set me straight to a certain extent, but it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's an ongoing thing that I would, I'd really like to see the end of, and I just have a hard time visualizing it actually coming to pass anymore. You know, I was told this morning that I should stop focusing on the outcome because that may be dragging me down too. But, you know, like I said, it's just, for me, it's hard. I want nothing more than to be out of the state of New York for good and to get on with my life. And it just seems that everything that comes up is another example of, nope, you're not able to do that yet. 
for whatever reason, there's always some reason. And again, it's almost always out of my control, but it's like, nope, you can't do that. Nope, you can't do that. Oh, you want to be free? No, you can't do that. <sighs> anyway, so like I said, I, uh, I definitely reached a very low point this morning. And I'm, while I'm not thrilled about my current position, I am happy that I'm still here to talk about it because knowing myself, knowing the dark places I've been able to take myself in the past, you know, I was a, uh, I was a very slim hair from, from reaching that point again this morning. And, you know, in another, in, on another day, who knows? So it's, it's given me, it's given me reason to reflect on a lot of stuff and, well, realize that I just, I have to keep pressing on. You know, that's the one thing that I was told by multiple people and they're right. You know, giving up now in any regard would just be a waste of everything I've done up until this point. And it would also largely make me a hypocrite <laughs> for all the things I preach, you know, when it comes to the legal stuff about not taking a plea deal and fighting everything. Well, if I quit on that, which I almost did during my last court date, and I mentioned that during the last court update, I came really close to just caving because, you know, the pressure is just getting to me. And, you know, it's now I'm now I'm in a fight between with myself because there is a part of me that knows, you know, if I did certain things, some of this would be over already and I could technically move on, but it would require me going against my principles. And I struggle with that. I don't want to go against my principles. So that's why I keep going on when it comes to the house stuff. I mean, that's even more out of my control, but it's still different factions of either government or the corporatism that's attached to government with the banking system. Like it's, it's all just this BS that's being thrown at me. And in the end, it's all has to do with government because it's regulate government regulations and government this and government that, whether it's federal, local, or state. Um, but for me to just give up on any of it, because I could, you know, I, I could have taken a plea deal or I could just get up and walk away. But then I'm, you know, a wanted band for the rest of my life. You know, I could just say, screw it and walk away from the house and say, okay, yeah, foreclose on it eventually. I wouldn't have to pay any more money, but I also wouldn't get anything in return for it. So that doesn't do me any good. So the only choice I really do have is to keep pushing on. And that's what I'm going to do. So again, I, I, I thank everybody who took the time to try to talk me off the ledge this morning. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. And, you know, it's got to get easier, right? It's what I keep, well, it's what people keep trying to tell me. It's got to get easier. You know, just believe, it's got to get easier eventually. Well, life doesn't work that way. I know that. I'm a big boy enough to know that, that, you know, it might not. <laughs> it might not work out. But I'm going to keep fighting. And I'm going to keep trying. I don't know what I'm going to do about this permit situation because the end of the conversation with the the contractor in question was not very pleasant you know, besides telling him, uh, you know, to go F himself. Um, I do believe the last words I screamed to him was just do your fucking job. <laughs> I don't know if that means he's actually going to do it or not. We'll find out. You know, as I, as I told my, my real estate agent this morning, that that's a bridge I may have actually burned in the process, including the, uh, along with the money that I already gave him. But, you know, even if he gets moving today, it may not be enough anyway, because the way with how slow the town works, even with the expedited process, it might not get done in time for before the contract runs out. And when that happens, I'm in a really bad spot. But I'm going to have to deal with it. And I'm going to have to figure some other way around it. You know? Otherwise, everything else I've done is for nothing. Everything I've told my kids since they were born is for nothing. So, 
got to press on. So that's what I will do. And again, thank you for those who put that idea in my head and kind of smacked it into me and said, hey, stupid, you can't give up. You're not a coward. You're not going to quit. And in the end, I know they're right. Because while I do like to complain, I mean, I didn't just win, but have the have created <laughs> the Kvetching Award. They actually specifically created the Kvetching Award in fifth grade for me. <laughs> um, you know, you don't reach that level of uh, Kvetching <laughs> where you're actually awarded for it uh, without complaining regularly. Um, but despite the fact that I do, whether I actually like to do it or it just comes out naturally, I don't know. But despite the fact that I do complain a lot, I still d- do what I need to do usually complaining through the process of doing it, but at least I get it done, you know. I'd probably be more effective if I complained less. I have to work on that. I know I have to work on that. I'll try to work on that. (laughs) But either way, even if I still complain, I still get it done, you know. I learned that a long time ago, and I've I've had bosses over the years who I worked for who understood that and were cool with it, you know. Because I told them up front, I said, listen, I may complain when you tell me to do something, but I'm still going to do it as long as you understand that. And some people weren't happy with that. Others understood it. And they were just like, oh, that's just Jay being Jay. He'll, he'll, he'll still get the job done. And I did. And that's what I have to do here. So I think I'm going to cut this off now because I've been rambling for quite a while. But thank you for everybody who listened to this. And thank you for uh, thank you to everybody who continues to support me in ever whatever way you can through this whole process, even just being there for me, like uh, some great people were today. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the ride ain't over yet, and even even on days like this when I, I think I've reached the end of the line and I just can't do anymore, something always gets to me and makes me realize, not. Nope, you're not done yet, man. You got too much fight in you. You're too angry to give up. <laughs> so I guess uh, in some ways, while my anger may be a detriment to me in a lot of aspects of my life, in this one aspect that's helped me keep going. So I should be thankful for that, I suppose. Anyway, thanks everybody for listening. And uh, I'll give another update pretty soon. Actually, there'll there'll be a court update coming next week. But yeah, for now, I'm not climbing any clock towers. So (laughs) at least we can be thankful for that. Peace.